Okay, welcome to Football Focus, episode 17 this week, Robert. And where are yeah. we today, Robert? Uh, we're at the Toronto Sports Academy, the highest altitude academy in the world. It used to be over in Japan, but it's here now in Dubai, in the UAE. Actually, yeah. I think it was yeah, Japan, Tokyo. Yeah, right? Tokyo. And we're, interestingly, who owns this football academy? Well, it's actually owned by a pro football league player. Um, Masoud Suleiman, Suleiman. Hamadi plays for Al Dafra Central Defender, and we have a, an interview with him. Yeah, make sure you watch that conversation. What's happening this week? We got top. You got the top. You got top teams playing, playing the bottom. bottom. And the fun, the, the fun fact that this week is you got the top. The, sorry, the, the bottom three teams are all fighting to move out of relegation. One they're of them all playing will. at the same time. They're all playing at the same time. So one of those teams at the bottom will escape from relegation if they win today so tight at the bottom you can't breathe Robert so and at the top it's Banyas Al Jazeera Banyas could go top next week Al Jazeera obviously going to win never know it's next next. It's nice. watch our show episode 17 Robert Tony Okay, and welcome everybody to episode 17 of Football Focus UAE. It's a, it's a special episode. You've already seen the In Conversation with Masoud Suleiman Al Hamadi. That's a, a special show. And today we've got another special show. Guys, you are so lucky. Okay, yeah, let's look at our first game. Let's analyse it together. Al Nasser versus Kalba. What happened there? Some strange decisions and... Well, yeah, the, the first fixture, it was three or six goals in the first fixture, so, um, you know, looking back at Anas' defence, they're one of the miserliest defences in the league. Um, they just started to concede a few goals over, over the last few months. Yeah, because they, they were up there, weren't they? The best yeah. defence, but now they've kind of come down yeah. a little bit. Yeah, so, um, be interesting to see what the boys at Calva could do. Big game for both teams. Calva's just trying to solidify, uh, solidify that middle place, those middle areas in the league, and then, obviously, Al Nasser looking to try and break into that top three, top four. But the, the big difference was this man here, number 21, Ryan Mendes. We've got a special guest on today, Ricardo, and it's his favourite player. He is a cracking player, played all over, yeah. played in England as well, and he is he has been their man of the season to me. Yeah, yeah. you'll see throughout the clips, he's, he's just unplayable at times. His pace is so direct. As soon as he gets the ball, his head's up and he just drives into that space. And, and he's got that ability to get yeah. past players, and yeah. what I like. That agility to go one way and the other player, so he drops one shoulder, goes the other way. You can just watch the defenders now, they just back off, back off, because they're just scared. They, they, a, they can't get near him, and if they do get near him, they're just going to worry they're going to foul him. As you can see, he just drives past one, he's straight, drinks inside, slows the pace down, goes again, you know, and it's, it's a great effort. That would you know, be a fantastic goal, yeah. But his pace throughout the game was absolutely yeah. exceptional. Yeah. 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 Picks the ball up from deep inside his own half, and blink of an eye, he's gone. What I like about Mendes, he just has one. He just, he's just forward. Yeah, he just wants to go. Again, great feet, great little great, great ball through here to Tagliabue. It's a goal in. And a lovely little finish under the goalkeeper. Nice to see Tagliabue scoring again. Yeah, he's in a, you know, a bit of a lean couple of games, but it was a great finish from him. But again, as we said before, Mendes' pace is just frightening. He just picks the ball up, he's so direct, goes and then he's got that composure just to slide the ball through. Would you say that was the difference between the two teams, Ryan Mendes? I think those two, having a top quality player like Tagliabue up front to put the ball in the back of the net, and mm. Ryan Mendes, who's just, at the moment, he's untouchable. Yeah, he's, he's, he's had a fantastic season. Yeah, and here's the replay here. Great finish, low down to the keeper. Keeper perhaps should have done a little bit better, but from that that distance. And unlike our NASA, just switching off here, and Kerr yeah, missing. Ahmed. And then a superb finish by Malak. He's had a first time this season, anti for Calvin. He's yes. been one of their best players. Even though I remember David Mariani said he's the worst dresser. Worst dresser, he's yeah. He's the best striker. But yeah, he might have had a dress, but he can definitely finish. Um, and as you can see there, that's that ball come across his body. Just strokes it in the back of the net. Give the goal for no chance. Ahmed with the outside of his foot. And then as we can see here, Calva. What happened here? Yeah. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> in terms of defensive it, shape, not too bad from the Calva back Well, they have been solid. Organised, they organised. Midfield team. here, a little bit out of sorts. They, you know, they should really have a defensive midfielder pushing in here. And obviously, you can see the player here is just in between it's the two lines. Deep. He's just in that little bit of pocket space, which is very difficult to pick up. 
and he just receives it on the half turn, goes, Mendes again. Again, slides the little ball in, gets a bit lucky, gets through, and then it's just a wild tackle from, from the Cowboy defender. As we slow it down here. Uh, it's, uh, what's his name? Bilal, is it? Mohammed Bilal? He just oh, gets he his foot on, foot on the ball, but I think because of the referee's angle, he's not been able to see that. I'm surprised he didn't look at VAR actually. Yeah, yeah, because he would have seen. I think probably from his angle, he just thought that's a stonewall penalty, I don't need to check it. If he had gone back, I think he would have um, changed his mind. So the penalty's here. Good finish, and then the referee spots some sort of infringement. So if we just let yeah, him Again, it was a. Incident packed second half, really, weren't it? Some strange decisions, some sending offs. So he checks the screen, and as you can see here, this is what we're talking about. A little toe. A toe. Now, I don't know whether he sort of thought about perhaps that what I shouldn't have given a penalty and I'm looking for something else, you know, you can talk about that as much as you want, but we're talking, we're talking millimetres. And he's overturned the penalty because of that. Oh, goodness me, are you watching this? And as you can see, I'm not and the coach, absolutely furious, can't believe it. And then one of the uh, assistant managers has got a red card. Um, but as we go, Mendes again, top of screen, involved in the build-up, great ball in, great header, terrible goalkeeping. But then the referees... What happened here again, Ian? Another strange... So Al Nasser again, I can't, just can't believe it. I don't know what's going on. And to be honest, I don't think anyone knows what's going on. But as this ball's So the infringement in, is that? He thinks the infringement's here maybe using the defender a bit of leverage to get up and down. Um, having said that, even if he did, the goalkeeper's made an absolute hash of this. <laughs> absolutely horrendous and a great finish. And as we can see here, there's absolutely nothing in it at all. You know, his, his hands are pretty much down by his side. No problem at all. Okay. Check the screen. No problem. The right decision has been made. Good, good. Yeah, so. Which was good. And do you think, I mean, we both like Cal, but we have kind of this infinity of yeah. towards Cal, but do you think Al Nasser deserved the win? They, they did. They had a little bit of extra quality. Like I said, Mendes was, was the man of the match, absolutely brilliant. We've got Tango up front who, who, who scores goals for fun. Um, they deserved it. Yeah. But having said that, and Nasser aren't the old, and Nasser is old, of old, when they were so solid in the back four, they just got a little bit of complacency. Yeah, but, they wouldn't give that know. silly goals like that away. So no boy yeah. error. So. But on the whole, you know, a fair result. And um, Nasser moving to fourth. So again, they're creeping back up the league and yeah. trying to put pressure on the teams above who are who uh, have got a bit of a bullet, really. So, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, maybe not Banyas, but the other yeah. teams. And they, they need that AFC Champions League place. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Cool. But yeah, fair result. Good. Okay, let's move on to our next match. Yeah. Ian? Okay, let's look at our next match. It was a match, actually, I commentated on. Frigier, uh, Al Jazeera versus Fujira. To everybody, I was talking to the staff. They're actually speaking to the CEO, Mr Ali. It was a foregone conclusion. That's the kind of vibe I've got. This is a, a definite three point Ian. But you know what? For Jira were unlucky Ian. What it came down to was for Jira, they scored two goals but they had more chances. And it came down to strength in depth. Yeah. And the physical side of the game. Al Jazeera fitter side, I've got to say that than mm. Fajira. And that last ten minutes, last five minutes you could say, that's what cost Fajira the game and the two substitutes. I mean they Al Jazeera have a, they brought on a Nigerian international yeah. uh, young player. Just can't compete with that. Like okay. saying, strength and depth links in with the fitness, doesn't it? Because Fajera have got to put out their best 11 every game. Yeah. Well, at least Al Jazeera can rotate players, they can rest players. Absolutely. So and they do back that. Back in fit. Marcel Kaiser does that. So let's look at the highlights here. Um, so the first half, uh, we've got the first goal coming up here. Like I said to you, we, Everybody get expected this foregone conclusion, but I want you to look at this first yep. goal. I don't know what happened with Fajira's defence. Look, he's from a corner, Ian. He's absolutely... If just pause it here, Ian, or let it replay, sorry. You'll see that Khalifa, the young international Emirati, plays for his country regularly. Yeah. He's, no, he's just stood on his own. Look, there he is. Yeah. There he is, Ian. I mean, what's that all about? We've got two players tackling each other, Fajira players. I, yeah. I didn't get that, Ian. We've got three on two there. This is a guy, Ian, every time I've watched Al Jazeera score a goal, yeah. I've been lucky. This is a young defender, plays for his country, fast, and he's a great header of the ball. Mm. And he scores headers, and they leave him unmarked. But what is that, Ian? That? The simplest thing is that when you're defending from a corner, you know, people like playing zonal or like going man to man, just go man to man. If you, if you're, if you're 
unsure your defensive responsibilities, just everyone picks up a man, as simple as that. I like to say, you pick up this guy, he can score. Yeah. As a manager. Yeah, you've got, like you said, you've got two guys that's wrestling with each other here, which means you've got a free man in the back, you've got a free man there. It, it's poor. And the thing is, it's a great corner. We always look for this, this corners or crosses to go into this, you know, imaginary second six yard box. If you put it into this imaginary, imaginary six yard box, second six yard box, Keeper doesn't know whether to come or not. Yeah. Defender's not sure whether the keeper's coming up, so it's very, very difficult to do. And then when you leave a player of his quality, you can't. Unmarked, you just can't do it. And he just comes around through the middle. He had a free header. I mean, nobody's pressuring him and nothing. So he's not going to miss. You know, and you can look at all, all the players' body shapes. No one's, you know, no one's near him, are they at all? No. no pressure. And so it was a silly goal to give away here, really. And I, I, I've got it down here. He came in the 10th minute. Uh, Khalifa Al Hamadi, number five, running from the marks, unmarked, free head, he couldn't miss. No. Poor defender, let's just put it down to poor defending. Yeah. Maybe something the no manager's got to look at. And then again, free kick, again unmarked, Khalifa. Yeah. I mean, he missed, but then Ian, again, I need to get your advice. We have VAR today. If we just pause it there, Ian, we have VAR today. Mm. And I've got to say, the, the referees on VAR, they, they, they don't miss a trick. No. They, they've really got good eyes because they spot things. This spot he's standing on a foot. Yeah. I mean, this guy pulls his shirt and he doesn't do it like discreetly. And no. I mean, if you play it on, he pulls it. And I mean, he really pulls it. We just play it on him. Yeah. Well, you can say that the referees as well have got a really good line of sight. Yeah, you can see through there. Good position and by the referee. To, again, it's just a great, great ball into that sort of second six yard box again. That, that corridor of uncertainty. Keeper's not sure where it's come for it or not. And to be honest, the player at the back should have put the ball in the back of the net. They're, they're, all, they're, they're all busy watching Ali Mavkut. And as it comes in. So Khalifa should have done better. And I, 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 I can't believe he missed. No. Again, a free header. But it's a shirt pull. I mean, he, he really pulled it. And Ali Mavkut is a man in form. I mean, it's a cool penalty, yeah. Brilliant. You know, you look at that. 22 minutes gone. Fajera, they're their own worst enemies there. They, they've created both opportunities for Al Jazeera. Yeah. They, 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 they gave the goals away. It wasn't mm. so much... Fajira did, did no. scores fantastic goals no. with lots of passes. It was just silly defensive errors. Mm. Then this was a lovely goal. Douglas Coutinho dips the ball over, plays it to Ben Labi, who it luckily goes in between the legs. If you yeah. just pause it there, um, Khalifa Ultimi was a man of the match. But an interesting stat here I've got down. This is the first ever Emirati to score against Al Jazeera for Fajira. Right. Bilal Yosef. Yeah. The first ever Emirati to score for Fiji against Al Jazeera. I just thought I'd bring that interesting Yeah, sense. very cool. But it was a lovely bit of play from the uh, new signing, Douglas Coutinho, the Brazilian. Jigged it over. If you have another look at it, Ben Labi kind of got lost in his feet. And it luckily, if you see Ben Labi, yeah. it goes through the legs. And Bilal Yosef right, comes finish. in and makes a little bit of history for us. But again, that's, that setup there from Al Jazeera is very unlike Al Jazeera. Yeah. Ben Labi having that space, that ball being able to chip over the box. Um, like you say, Ben Larby got lucky with the touch, yeah. but then there was a man outside him who was free as well. That's not the Al Jazeera of no. six weeks ago. I don't know what's happened to him. To, trust me, they were lucky. Mm. Then we have a, a goal here from a set player, which is Fajira's Fizier, one of their strengths. Yeah. They can play from set players. And we, look, we can look at the difference between the two. So they're playing zonal. So if you look at how they're set up defensively, they're playing zonal. More zonal European defensive. style. Eh? And then they're looking at the, the man marking at the top of the second six yard box. So but look at this player. Yeah, he's an Iraqi player. Mohammed uh, Mustafa, mm-hmm. he, uh, he scored against Shubab al he scored a wonderful header. He's a man who, a defender, young defender, 25 years old, can score, and there he is, comes in, jumps up above everybody else because yeah. of that zonal mark and he had the yeah. space. He's found that little pocket, isn't he? Yeah. People aren't sure who to mark or not, and keepers, keepers come. I get he's on his own, he yeah. in the zonal marking. Nobody's yeah. marking him. And as you can see, they've all, they all just dropped off a little bit into that six yard box. And then, you know, I've got to ask, the keeper's got to do a little bit more there. He starts to come. If you're going to come, you've got, you've got to go for it. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't either. And then he scores. Yeah. This is, if we just pause it there, Ian, this is, uh, half time. So they scored right on the yeah. half time to make it, uh, 2 1. Uh, well, that, that was the first, first goal. So now we're coming into the second half. It's 2 2. And Fajira were the better team mm. up to about the 89th minute. This is the only chance they had. I think they hit the bar here, Ian. Or the goalkeeper made a good yeah, save, good save. Um, and hit the crossbar. That's the only real chance. Al Jazeera and Fajira. Then this was a, this is where the, the, the thing where the this Khalifa 
wears it out to Imozik, uh, who wants his nuclear hero. Khalifa, again, the man of the match. I don't yeah. know whether he's being told to get in the box. He plays like a midfielder, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, it does. He wins the ball and it luckily falls to Alan Akut, who gets that vital does goal. the rest, but it'd be interesting just, just to watch it. Number nine here doesn't offer anything at all. He starts to track back, so which means... They've got three on three, which is difficult. Three. We need, I three think if we could, we, could have, we need one man spare. So ideally three comes across here, here's your spare man, and number nine comes here and takes him out. Then you've got your spare man, which is... What's that down to? We're into the 80-odd minute. Is it the 85th minute? Is that down to... Could be he's a little bit... Fitness, couldn't it? It could be, which again, lack of concentration, or your fitness is affecting your concentration, you're not, you're not switched on. Um, and as we... Because it was a poor up, goal. Khalifa's there, this is the defenders again. Yeah. Gone. And number nine is not, not helping the situation at Which all. Which allows him to still, comes in. Still, still nothing. I mean, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. And then, um, Fujita had a chance to, to pull it level. But, um, the goalkeeper did well. They did have a look at it on VAR. Yeah. But, uh, Ali Kassif managed to punch the ball away, then caught the defender. And, uh, and rightly so, it wasn't. Penalty wasn't Ward yet. He had his eye on the ball, wins yeah. the ball, uh, caught the defender afterwards. They, they spent a few minutes looking at it. And here we have the, the final goal. Imo Zekil, Nigerian international. Mm. Look, he's got space, time. That's just tiredness here. That's it's exactly, right. that's that's exactly what I was going to say. The defenders were trying to get back. They were trying the hardest. They just didn't have, didn't have it in their legs. And that's, that's what we talked about at the start, wasn't it? Where... Al Jazeera, guys, has got the luxury of being able to rotate his squad. Fujiro have got to play the best 11 every, every game. Yeah. And uh, they'll look it to lose, but at the end of the day, the right team won. Yeah. Uh, it was a cracking game, as I like to say to watch. All right, let's move to our, another game here. One more game. And then, uh, by the way, we have some special guests after this game. So, watch this space. Our next game, Alain versus Banyas. Banyas, the unstoppable train, come up against her. On their day, can be unbeatable. I like what yeah. happened here. Well, a great game from start to finish. Two, like I said, two very, very good teams. And on your day, you don't know who who could beat each other. This man deserves a lot of credit, Daniel Ayala. His his team, the way they're set up at the moment, are just unstoppable. Yeah, everything is going their way. Everything. To me, manager of the season. He's doing absolutely brilliantly, and dresses very well, doesn't he? As well, so lovely, <laughs> lovely suit. He reminds me of one of our guests today. Yeah. But he's got them playing some absolutely brilliant football. But it was um, Elena came came out of the block straight away, firing hard and into this main man, Kojo. And just great example here of his, his strength. He's what a would powerful, say, young. Yeah. The defen defensive back forward, defensive line, far too split. You know, you've got your two centre backs here. This ball back has got to be tight in here. He's not marking anything, he's just he's marking space. He is. Is. Um, and as you can see, Lava does brilliantly as this ball comes into him. Just holds him, holds him, holds him. Random. Turns, 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 and then, you know, unstoppable. Absolute brilliant Pink strike. Out of them there, yeah. But that, it is a great goal, but it's, it's defensive. But like you said, if that defender had moved in a little bit close, he could have closed him down a little exactly. bit better. So they got, yes, they've got three there. To be honest, we're talking first few minutes of the game. Just foul him. Foul him. <laughs> Put him on the ground, get yourself back, but they don't. You know how dangerous it is. And it, and it comes back to bite them, doesn't it? And it is, a, you know, it's a wonderful strike. I'll take that away. I think that's the goal of the week for me, and I am, I'm going to get you know, Sam to put it in. Do you agree with me? Sam, can yeah. you put that uh, goal, goal of the week? week? Definitely. Definitely goal of the week. Okay. So, Elaine, it's all Elaine at the moment. First 15, 20 minutes is all Elaine. And again, Banyas, too, too spread out. You know, if you go back to the great, great defensive teams of old, you know, Arsenal, the Invincibles, or when George Grant and tried Arsenal, they, you know, they were touching distance, the back forward touching distance away from each other. They're too far away. Again, three needs to be tighter, centre back needs to be tighter. And the fullback is fantastic. You can't because give that space to Kojo. No, 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 if the ball goes out there, that's fine. We can deal with that. But if it's coming straight down the middle, you've got absolutely no chance. And again, turns too easy. Kaya, then he's Kaya. on. 3v2, plays it in, cuts inside. Labber's there as well. Powerful again. And a great effort. And probably should have done a bit better if not played his number 11 in on the side. Um, but we know Banyas. They never say die in, do they? They don't, and that's, uh, that's been their huge strength this season. You know, they started off the season, didn't they, on fire. They had that little dip, but they never gave up, and they're just on the crest of the wave at the moment. Playing some unbelievable football. Fantastic. And I think, football. 
going back the last two or three games, they've either been behind or not playing particularly well, and they've got the points, and that's why they are where they are at the moment. But going to the, you know going to the second half, they're still one 0 down. And they playing some really good football, which is which is again good to see. But good pressure, good bit of play there. Exactly drives again, similar to Ryan Mendes, just drives, drives. But there's drives. still a lot to do here. Yeah, you know, still Pedro. You'd say there's not not a lot of pressure on half tackle, but look at the desire. And a great finish. Two fantastic goals, yeah. But that desire from João Pedro just not giving he up. He never gives up. And that's that's the big difference. How did you describe him? You hate to play against him, but you'd love him yeah, in your team. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's, he's like that Luis Suarez, isn't he? He's just you know, a horrible individual to play against, but he's every every, every man wants him on the team. for everything. And a beautiful finish, just whips across it, top corner, giving a goal. Do you think he's made the difference this season, yeah? Massively. Bringing in, because they have that mentality, he has never give up, yeah. never die, scrap for every, yeah, every goal. And I think that's gone through with the team now. Yeah, like you say, and it's not just the goals he's scoring, it's his attitude on the pitch. You know, like you say, he never gives up, fights for every lost cause, and that's the big difference. Um, but again, Elaine still had chances. What a Unbelievable save. He it, it was offside, but ignore the offside, because that is an unbelievable save. Yeah, well, goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah. Hands. As we see, as we go on. Yeah, it's clearly it's offside. Absolutely brilliant. But, good you know, positioning. Yeah, superb. And he was actually had a very, very good game. What happened here, Ian? Ball comes across. You think Alain are back in numbers again? Sultan, another chance after scoring a wonderful goal. Obviously, he's feeling confident. But you can see from the highlights here, you know, it's, it's back on the fourth. There's, you know, any team at any moment can score. Keeper again makes a brilliant save. Pushes it out wide. You know, not enough. We've seen that where keepers parry back towards the goal. He's done brilliantly. This um, is our, this is Banyas though. The, the they just keep going, keep going. Balls into the box, and we know we've got we've got some decent players. We've got Pedro in there, who's superb in the air. Ball in again. Just don't clear the lines. Come with the hour. Come with the man. Comes to Jao Pedro, and he does the rest. You, you know, you can't you can't give him a half chance, let alone a chance inside the six yard box. No. Um, and it yeah. just shows, doesn't it? What a good Maybe I shouldn't is. say this here. And he took his shirt off. And you know, he got a yellow card. Yeah. And he was suspended yeah. for their next game. And guess who it's against? Hatter. Yeah. Um, so interesting. Because he was already on two yellow cards. And if he got one more, he'd get a, a mm. suspended for one match. Yeah. So you never know. That may Because he's never done it before, you see. So you're you, you implying maybe a tactical yellow yeah. card, just in case. And maybe I shouldn't say this, but yeah. I think it's a, a tactical but thing. Again, if that's the case, it just shows everyone switched on. They know how important the next game is and the next game is, and they know they need him in it. Yeah. So they couldn't afford to him, lose him in the, in the Hatter game to play later, you know, miss him later on. So if they, that's what they've done. Yeah, so you missed the Hatter game, which is very close. Again, Take still. 89th minute, still a lane, we've got chances to score. Um, Laber again was, was back to his best really. They look the better team of the two, I'll lay them. Yeah. Again, this is Banyas. They grind out their results, don't they? This is the Banyas never say die. Yeah. And this time is why they're going to win the league. You think they're going to, wow, it's a, bit, it's a bold decision. I'm still going for Al Jazeera because they've got a better run in the end. Yeah. But uh, Banyas, oh, he'd, be, he'd be a brave man yeah. to bet against them. Okay, mm-hmm. thanks for that, Ian. Well, like I said, let's go meet our special guest today. We have a, uh, from um, numerous requests, we've got Ricardinho back on the show, and then we've got a special guest called Thomas from America who works in Libya, but he's going to tell us about himself, so uh, wait for the next part of the show. We've got two special guests. You already know Ian, he's always a special guest, but we've got Ricardinho back. He's, uh, my students have been asking for him to come back, so students, Hatton, it's cool. There he is, Ricardinho. He's going to analyse Shabab Athlete versus uh, Charger. Charger. And then we've got Thomas. So you know, uh, Ricardinho is from Colombia, from Cali in Colombia. Um, and then there we've got Thomas from America. He always looks sharp. He dresses a, uh, what's the word, debonair. <laughs> Students, look up that word for me. <laughs> we've got Thomas from America, he's coming to, he's going to analyse a game. You're analysing a fantastic game, Al Wassel yes. versus Iceman. Iceman. Yes. Great game to analyse as yes. well. And then obviously Ian and I will be looking at the other games. So without further ado, Thomas, we'll start off with Thomas. He's going to tell him, tell you a little bit about himself, how long he's been here, what he does here, and um, and then analyse the game for us. So Thomas, you have the floor. Well, thank you. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure to be here with you all to 
be with some more football fans. Uh, I'm from America, as has been said. I'm currently teaching here at Emirates National Schools, Raza Kaima. Having a great time teaching here uh, with fabulous students, wonderful parents, and again, going out to all of my students. Uh, of course, I am a PSG fan as far as uh, the other leagues, but of course, I follow NBA basketball in America, baseball, American football. I'm just a sports fanatic, period. But uh, it's again, a pleasure to be here uh, with footballers here in the Arabian Gulf League, uh, seeing fabulous talent from around the world. Yeah, it's nice to have you here. So, um, Thomas, thank you for that. For, for, so the game, let's look in the, the highlights will come up in a minute, guys, in the back. Tell us about our Wassel Iceman. It looked a fantastic game. It was, and it was really a tale of, of two halves. Um, you know, our Wassel, you know, came out and he seemed like, kind of like flat a little bit. And, um, well, if I could tell you, Ian, our Wassel, did that tell it to you to Jay? Mm. If Cad had a funny season, Thomas, I know you've been watching, but we've watched our Wassel every weekend. They kind of, I don't know, they've yeah, had three managers. Yeah, yeah. Three and, um, different managers, and the one minute they're playing brilliantly, and then they, and then they play bad. And they've just tried to, they show that consistency, I think, because That's of managers way. changing, managers coming in, different styles of play, all the different players. Very difficult to get that consistency, and that showed in their, their results in the league table. Yeah. It probably showed in the game a little bit. Yeah, it did, because Hillman um, really, Seems like he's trying to implement some different styles of, of tactical offensive strategies as well as trying to do a few things on defense. And really in the first half, it seemed like that they were kind of flat. They were kind of caught flat footed with some of the things they were doing. And it's like in the second half, turn. they said, Hellman said, okay, boys, we're a better team. We have better talent. Let's go ahead and stop playing with these guys and yeah. go ahead and do our thing. And that's what seems to have happened in the second half. Maybe you put something in the cup of tea to yes, help yes. there. Yes. A little, little, little spice in the, uh, in the tea a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened in the first half? Uh, tell us who, who scored. Uh, when the first half... the highlights are playing at the moment now. Yes, Thomas. when the first half, I really appreciated what Leonardo... Uh, is it Spadacio? Yeah. Um, the, uh, Great player. Yes, yes. I mean, he, he has skills. Yeah. And he makes it look easy. When the ball's at his feet, you know, it's like he's a magician <laughs> with the ball. Oh, that's and And, um, you know, he made it look easy with the goal he scored. Of course, he had a penalty kick earlier in the half. So it was like two zip. And again, Al Wasa was like, well, we're here. So Osman scored the first two goals. Yeah, Osman scored the first two goals. And then after that, it was a, a goal that was scored right before the half. Yeah, it seemed a big difference. to turn the momentum yeah. of the whole match. So going into that second half, Al Wasa would have felt good with that cup of tea. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, it really would. Uh, but once the second half hit, again, Al Wasa said, I don't know what was said at halftime. I mean, maybe Hellman, yeah, yeah, maybe Coach Hellman said something to them at the halftime, uh, speech or whatever, but they came out and they were very aggressive. So who was the key man? You mentioned the key man was what's his uh, name? Fabio? Fabio Lima. Yeah. He's been a fantastic player. <laughs> yes, yeah, super player. Ian's yeah. highlighting a few times in yeah, the game. Yeah, player. S similar to sort of Jao Pedro, the sort of never give up mentality, chases every ball, a real sort of terrier, and, and a great, great tactician as well. Yes, and I love the fact that he's really great in tight spaces. Yeah. Uh, it was a goal that he scored uh, where he, um, he had three defenders on. Uh, he juked all of them out, <laughs> gave a pass, did a give and go, got the ball back, scored the goal. Yeah. And it was just fantastic how he did that, and he made it look so easy. Yeah. It looked very easy. I think he's second in the league in yes. goal scorers yes. in St. Thomas. Yes. Yeah. So, overall, Iceman versus Awasel. Do you feel that Al Wassel deserved the win? Yes, I feel that they deserved the win. Uh, Iceman was the better team in the first half. Yes, Al Wassel was the better team in the second half. But it wasn't like um, Al Wassel was so bad in the first half. They were just kind of like going through the motions, but they were doing a few things. But then it's like the switch turned on in the second half. But I think yeah. the thing like you mentioned, that goal just before half time was the catalyst for change. Yes. Imagine Ashman going in. Going into the changing room at half time, 2 0 up. Yes. Happy, buzzing, high, our whistle down, down and out. Right. And suddenly it's 2 1. We know what Ashman are like, they tend to panic, they tend to sit back. Alarm bells will be ringing. If they score one more, we're in trouble. Suddenly the atmosphere is completely changed. Yeah. A good point to show it. And Ashman are one of the worst, they have one of the, the second worst or third worst defence in the league. Yes, yes. So, and, and hopefully, with what's going on with with the team, I know they're facing relegation 
They're in a relegation battle right, right, right now. So uh, something has to change with their defensive strategies or tactics. Maybe they may need to play harder uh, or to change some of the strategies they're doing. Maybe switch up a few things. Ian and I have, 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 have pointed that out a few times. Silly mistakes in defence. They've got a young defence, Rakan, the Yemen Marathi, and the uh, Darlington, the Nigerian. Two good young players, but they're still learning the game. And they seem to make, give away silly penalties, make silly mistakes. So it kind of reminds me of the NBA. We've been watching the National Basketball Association, the young team, um, where they have great talent and they can't win games. They play to lose. <laughs> instead of playing to win. So when it's crunch time, when it's time where it's stressful and you got to really make the plays that separates the best from the okay teams, uh, they don't know how to win yet. So it seems like that this team is still learning with the young players to learn to win. So you do those little things. You know, you may um, uh, attack harder. You know, you may play better defense when this penalty kicks happening or you may... Uh, Play your defender tougher, you know, on the dribble. So those small things make the big things better in big situations. Wow, what a fantastic analysis there. Well done, Thomas. Thank you so much. And uh, please make your comments. What do you think to Thomas, an American? He loves football here, loves all sports, by the way, as he mentioned. He's in his blood, really. But thank you for that, Thomas. And thank you for the having the pleasure. Now we're going to move on to our Colombiano uh, analysis. By the way, guys, a little bit nervous, so bear with him, okay? No comments. Hey, he's so nervous. Please, okay? He's already nervous. Remember, this is his, not his first language, but he speaks English really well. So you're going to look at, analyse the game, Ricardo. Just remind everybody where you're from and a little bit about yourself before we go into the game, Ricardo. Yeah, I'm from Colombia. It's very far from here, about 21 <laughs> hours by playing so hard, so, but I'm happy to be here and I appreciate the opportunity that, that you give me to commentate football in the, the UA, so I'm very happy here, okay? And, uh, and Ricardo, like here yeah, myself and Thomas, is a, an English teacher, does some work with the teaching the football coaches, the referees and staff, so uh, he knows a lot about fo football and in Colombia football is it's like a religion in Colombia, yeah? Um, so he knows all about football. We have Colombian players here, Ricardo, don't we, as well? We mentioned that before. Yes, we have a Colombian, uh, Eduardo, I forgot his last name. But they are, they are Colombian, more are coming. You yeah. have to wait, more the Colombians future. are coming in the future. Futuro, so. we'll have more <laughs> Colombian players coming. But anyway, um, you're going to look at a, a good game, like almost top of the table clash. Shabab al Atli versus um, Charger. Charger. Yeah, now Charger at home, yes? Charger, Charger at home, and, and the guess. Shababali. Shababali. Okay. So what happened, Ricardo? Tell us. Oh, it was only a 1-0 win, wasn't it? It wasn't a okay. game full of goals. Okay, there were not many goals. They, they didn't score many goals. But, you know, they tried to do it. They worked hard. So our first half penalty from Carlos Eduardo. Two to be different. Our Rashi Stadium at Shababali. Eight hours. Charger 1-0. In the highly anticipated March 21st clash, Shabab Ali were the better in the side. Okay, they have both the same opportunities, but uh, there was a, a, a penalty. We saw the guests rely on counter counter attacks. You are saying that Ian, sorry to to run, but Charge have become this counter attack team, haven't they? Yes, they just, just kind of picked up on that. Yeah, they've changed the way they, they play, haven't they? Whereas before they were going out to games and dominating and taking a game to a position, and then it stemmed from, I think it stemmed from that, that cup final that they lost. They went into the game on the back foot, they wanted to play, soak up pressure, and they tackled quickly through Wellington, Coronado, mm. and other players. And it sort of spilled over to the league, and it just hasn't hasn't quite worked. For them. No. I don't think it's the natural game for the team, and, it, and it's not. Yeah, it's interesting because Ricardo picked up on mm. that. Is it? We're playing on this counter attack. Sorry, Ricardo. Okay. 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 Until the home side were awarded a penalty kick in the 20, 28th minute, so that's made difference. Carlos Eduardo stopped but and converted from the spot, scoring what turned out the winning goal. So, so the, the game was decided on a penalty? Yeah, on a penalty. So the Brazilian midfielder is now involved in seven goals. 
in his six last seven games in the Arabian Gulf. So he has scored six goals and one assist. Great player for Shabbat. Okay. So Chabobali, Chabobali came close to doubling the league six minutes later. But, oh, this was that. I like it like many of these uh, uh, kind of flicks are made in Colombia. Machari Box bicycle kit went over the bar. Yeah, I saw that. It was I like it. Fantastic. Well. That's uh, very South American. Yeah. <laughs> so at the end, Charger tried to pull off that second half comeback, but were repeatedly denied by the hosts of the defensive performance. The king were handy a golden chance to level the score line when they were awarded a penalty to win it from time. However, Chabab Ali, keeper, Magic Neza, say Igor Coronado, you remember Igor, Igor Coronado? Effort to seal the win. What happened there, Yeni? Coronado, you see. I, Ricardo and I were watching the game, he had so many chances and he had a penalty, was it 85th minute? Yes. 85th minute and he missed. Yeah, I think it just sums up the whole Charger atmosphere and attitude at the moment. They just, they just, for whatever reason, they just can't get it right. You know, they start off the league, like whatever it was, seven or eight games undefeated. Yeah. We said, well, I said from the start, they were the league. Were the league at all. And through the middle, middle period of the league, they, they were playing really well. And then suddenly this, this huge dips come and they just don't look confident. They've got, they've got some of the best players. Oh, Coronado's, you know, absolutely world beaten. Um, Portuguese international player. And you, do, you don't, don't expect something like that from him. Because he missed a lot of chances, uh, Ricardo, didn't he? And he missed, and it was a, 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 what was the penalty like? It was a soft penalty, I wasn't, was it not a they good can. penalty? They have. The goalkeeper got his hand. Mm. Was it the goalkeeper made a good save or was, did Caranado make a bad penalty? What was it? I think it was the goalkeeper. Did it maybe the goalkeeper, yeah, maybe it was, it was confusing, a confusing game. So anyway, they, they, they look at the bar and they, they, they say penalty, it was a penalty, okay? Okay, so, okay sorry, carry on with Chabab. Okay, finally, Chabavali ended the sixth game, winless run against Charger. Wow. They raised their tolly, they tolly the, to 37 points and moved temporarily to fourth place, awaiting all Nasser's clash with Kalba on Tuesday. Yeah, that's the next game. On the other hand, Charger draw the three value points in the title race. Very important, no? As they knock six, seven points of leaders Al Jazeera. So that's you know, basically a very brief... Yeah, they're not going to win. Well, no, no, we've got five, four or five games left. It's just too much for them now. If they were playing well, you could think potentially, but Banyas are going to slip up. And Al Jazeera, with that running, I don't think will slip up at all. So it's going to be a two-horse race. Charger were we're, we're ahead of the field for such a long time. And this, this change of style, change of formation, change of game plan just hasn't worked. And I don't, don't know why. Why? Yeah. Mm. Disappointing. And, and interestingly, these are two Emirati managers coming up against each other. But you were mentioning, Ricardo mentioned Shabab Al Athlete's defence has big differences since Al Mahd is coming. He's been, he's been, he's been, he's been, been absolutely in. superb. The way he's organised them, they're quite a free free scoring team that have been the last you know recently and then the defence has just been exceptional. And I think we mentioned last week or the week before that if he was there at the start of the season they would be in the, in the top three. You know, they're, they're, well they're now fifth at the moment anyway. Um, so it's, been brought in. it's a shame for Charles they're the champions, Ricardo. Before COVID nineteen they were the champions of the league and uh, mm. doesn't look like they're gonna retain that championship. But Ricardinho, thank you. Thank no. you guys. Make your comments, what do you think? Uh, about our, our guest, our special guest today. Okay, we'll move on to Ian. Yeah, last Ian game. Got one um, game we've got one game. Yeah. So it's Al Dafa versus Al Wadda. And um, a local derby. Local derby. And obviously, Al Wadda were going to that game after being hammered by Al Ain 3 0 the previous week um, and bounced back brilliantly. There's been a big, big shake up in Al, Al Wadda. They've removed the manager. Uh, Rasik's gone. They've brought in Hank 10 Kate from. Dutch, he's a Dutch football manager, but he's been out here before, so he's managed Al Wadda before, he's managed Al Jazeera, assistant yeah, manager of Barcelona, wow. Chelsea assistant manager. Uh, I think he's just come from Saudi Arabia, so he's got you know lots and lots of experience and knows the UAE Pro League as well, yeah. which is which is a big thing. And he had an immediate impact. I don't think he was involved in the game itself, I think he was in the stands watching. But 
three nil to our world, they looked just a completely different team and dominated from start to finish. Because they have been looking horrendous, yeah. They've grinded out and draws and results, but it's just don't look good. So, so, so with, with the new manager coming in, that's obviously a new lease of life to players. Yeah. And you know a different style of play. He plays that traditional sort of European style of football. You know, Kaiser plays Al Jazeera, like to get the ball down, play the ball to feet quickly, um, and that showed in that game. And, that, and again, Al Dafra. We've so, talked about them yeah, too much this Again, it's very, very yeah. disappointing. We they've got some great players. You know, Masood who we interviewed last week. International yeah, player, 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 and they have got a really good team, but they, they just haven't quite got it right. And there's quite a few teams in that league that are in a similar sort of situation. You know, they should be higher up in the league than they are but they've just not performed week in week out and it's that lot, sort of lack of team cohesion bit of continuity different players coming in from week out week out um, and it's just showed same with our weather really so another manager in hopefully he's got well we know he's got the pedigree he's got the experience um, let's just hope he can you know um, solidify what's happening at the moment to the end of the season the end of the season and then we go again next season Interesting. Okay, thank you for that. You saw that in the highlights there. Okay, the last game, Kofagan versus Hatter. We, we've talked about Kofagan. Kofagan had, had a fantastic season, Ian, guys. He's a, these were teams that everybody expected to be relegated. They're no team in. Um, but Kofagan, they've got five South Americans in there, Ricardo. Um, the, the, these five South Americans make the difference. And if they're on, if they're on form, they're unplayable, Kofagan. They beat Al Jazeera at the top of the team, three them at home. And I've seen them destroy teams, but then I've seen them lose against the lower teams. It's, I don't know, it depends on these five Brazilians. Yeah, but I, what a fantastic season they've had in, we've said that. Yeah. They're going to stay in the, the league. And they come up against Hatter, bottom of the table. Um, and we've said every game for Hatter, Ian always says it's, it's a cup final. And this is the kind of game, if Hatter would have any chance of getting, staying in the league, it's a game they have to win. And I have to say, watching the game, you'll see the highlights now, so I'm going to put it on. There's not much to write home about. Okay, the first chance came five minutes into the game to Kofakan. Again, the two Brazilians, Dodo and Ramon, beautiful through ball, split the defence. Ramon, one on one with the goalkeeper, but the goalkeeper pulled out a wonderful save. And um, the goalkeeper was really good. Hatter only had really one chance. It was a foul on the 18-yard line. You can see it now. And um, they won a free kick and uh, they hit the crossbar. That was it for Hatter. It was disappointing. I've always said Hatter can't score goals for Toffee at the moment. They need a goal scorer. They're playing better here. We've seen that. We've analysed that in our past games here. They're playing better. They look better. But they just can't score. And it's always in that last 10 minutes that they really struggle with their fitness and the better teams seem to dominate. And um, all in all, Kofa can deserve the win to me. I don't like saying that because Atta, I don't like the team. It's a lovely club. It's a family-oriented club. But disappointingly, Ian, I don't know about you, but I think we're going to go down. Yeah, I think it's different. You know, Fujero and Ashman are doing their best to help Hatter out. You know, they're losing every week as well. Um, and Hatter just, if you, know, if you just get a win, um, you know, it would propel them into that, really into the mix. You know, they're close as it is. Just can't. But I want Ian, though. And, really and you said that, you know, they're crazy chances, which they are, but they haven't got that person who's just going to put the ball in the back of the net. And that's, you know, they work brilliant, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. Okay, so thank you, everybody, for listening. We're just going to finish off with... Uh, uh, predictions for next week and we're going to get our guests to do it Ian is that okay who do you think is going to win and uh, remember comment what do you think because we've been getting a lot of comments thank you everybody for your comments uh, we've had a lot so Ian uh, sorry Ian I'm going to let these two Ricardinho and uh, Mr Thomas so our first game is match uh, week 22 we have Etiab Calba versus Corfacan Who do you think is going to win? He's in the middle of the table. Big Thomas. Local, big local derby. And it's a local derby, thanks again. East Coast local derby. <laughs> Who do you think? These two are they're almost next to each other in the league. Mm. And Calvert at home. Thomas? Mm. Well, are you going to we'll, go for the obvious? I was going to say, we'll team the home team. Calvert. Calvert. And what do they have at stake? You know, that's the question. There's not, they're not really playing for anything. Right, so it's just a local, local pride. Right, so yeah, local so pride. who's going to have bragging rights? So 
So you know, you would think the home team would come through and have bragging rights for another year or so. Thomas is good for the Calder win. <laughs> Calder versus Corfer can local derby. Who's going to take it? The Gardenio. Calva. Oh, when you're local, although you don't have, there, are no, there are no people in the stadium watching that, so you try to defend, yeah, your home, so I can call Calva. Okay. okay, we have uh, Al Dafra, you saw we had the interview with uh, Masoud Suleiman. Al Dafra from Abu Dhabi versus Shabab Al Atli. So Al Dafra are having a terrible season. They're lucky not to be in the relegation zone. I think they've just scraped through again, yeah? Yeah. So they're down there, but they're not going to be relegated. They're playing Shabab al who who said they're playing great football, yeah. mean defence. Thomas? Yeah, that's kind of obvious, you would think. Shabab al Yes, yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. The Dafra. Dafra. Oh, Dafra. Like, oh, sorry. Oh, the last day was nice, but it didn't happen. You can't do it. We worked in Al Dafra. I know. So be careful. That's right, that's right, that's right. You can't say they're going to lose. Who, 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 do you think they're going to win? I think Al Dafra, yeah. To do, you know, okay. So, Ricardinho's going for Al Dafra win at home against um, Shabab Al it, it would be a nice upset. It, it would be a nice, nice show for sure. It would be, it would be really nice. Now we've got top of the table, Banyas at home, with bottom of the table, Hunter Thomas. I mean, it's not rocket science. Yeah, well, okay. Banyas versus Hatta. Who's going to win? Well, Banyas again. You know, Banyas seems to have that never say die mentality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know they always, you know, it's a term we have. You know, to grind it up, tough it up, no matter what it takes. And even if the team isn't so spectacular as far as uh, individual uh, over the top talent, they make up for it in grit and, yeah. and they make up for it in spirit and. and and, and that's Hatter, you're describing yeah. Hatter at the moment, Ian, Ian right. describing the same. So you're going for a Banyas win? Yes. Do you think it'll be a big win because they're top and I think it'll be a close call? Because Hatter aren't playing it, it, well. It'll be a close call. I'd say 3 2. 3 2. Okay, good, good. Oh, we got, we got a result there. <laughs> Mr. Ricardo, what? Drop. top Banyas drop. versus <laughs> the bottom. You're going for a draw? <laughs> no, 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 wait, no, wait, no, wait. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the one that is in the top. Yeah, they're going to win. Sure. What do you think? 2-0, 1-0, 3-0, 3-2. Thomas is going for 3-2. 3-2 the You're going to go for... I agree with Thomas. You're going to go with Thomas. I, okay. think, I think Banyas will just do enough. I think they'll be 2-0. Because yeah. Jan Pedro suspended. Yeah, so I think they've got their eye on bigger games. Obviously, they've got to win this game. must win game. But they don't want to make sure that they're going at it for a long. They don't want any injuries. So I think yeah. it'll be a very professional 2-0. Done. Let's get the next game on. It, it, this is what they call a trap game. Yeah. You know, you if you're not if you're not uh, if you're looking ahead and you could lose this game. Yeah. You know, and being complacent. Right. Right. Yeah. But that's not Banyas this season. Right. They aren't going to go on games. Okay, so Thomas Awassel versus Sharjah. We saw Sharjah, they're the champions of last season. Awassel, you saw them play the who do you think they're at home against Sharjah the champions who are Kind of, as as uh, Ricardinho brought out, they, they play this counter attacking. Yeah. And they make cake. A little disarray. A little bit right now with Sharjah. Yeah. Both of them in there. Yeah. Bit of this, uh, yeah. Um, mm. It's a tough one to call this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there were people in the stands, you know, I would say Sharjah. You know, I mean, I've been to Sharjah, I like the atmosphere. Yeah. With our wassail yeah. in Dubai. Right. So, yeah, so it's. Gonna make a difference. It seems like who's going to want it more. Dude, that's true. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a drop. <laughs> Good call. Good call. What do you think? Two, two, one, one, three, three. I think it'll be a two-two draw. I like the two-two draw. Very yeah. good. Very good. Mr. Ricardo. So if Dubai char charges at Mall City. Like no charge. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm traveling around charge and charge and charge and charge and charge so I go with charge and charge. Yeah, charge and win. Yeah, charge win. We would expect that. The charge is Ian's team. They've, 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 they've got to win, haven't they? If they don't win, that's them out. Completely yeah. out of the league title. Um, it's a big so game. They yeah. must win. I hadn't thought about that though. Yeah, that's why I was thinking about who has more stake. Yeah. 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 I'll wrestle, yeah. they're not going to win the league. But whether whether yeah. they go in that and they know this is a must win game and there's too much pressure for them, they know that where they were at the start of the season, the top of the league, they're, they're not performing well at the moment. They've got to win, but yeah, I don't I don't like the chances that they're playing. Yeah, and then it could be our wrestle has nothing to lose. 
Yeah. So guys can play three, right, play three and else creativity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Very interesting. Very good. Interesting game. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And then we got the next day for Jira. They're in the relegation zone, or they keep mm-hmm. in and out and in and out. They've changed the manager. They brought in this Tunisian guy. Fajira versus one of the meanest defences in the league. They were top of the league all round about there, Al Nasser. One of the richest clubs in the league. So it's Dubai versus, uh, so Fajira at home against Al Nasser. Thomas. Well, they say defence wins championships, even though they're not playing for championships. Fajira have got the worst, yeah. if not the worst, <laughs> worst defence <laughs> along with Hatta in the league. So I'm going for the defensive team. Uh, and this one set away to Fijiri going for them for a win yes comfortable win say 2-0 Ryan Mendez is in that team on that set you love Ryan Mendez he's not South American I think he's French but uh, French but Ryan he plays like a South American he's going to win on that set going to win what score 2-0 2-0 ok interesting guys um, Ajman versus Alain. Ajman in the relegation zone. Mm-hmm. Well, the with Fijir in and out, in and out. Versus Alain. So Alain, very good team. But Ajman at home, you saw them in the, I think it was you, Thomas, yeah. in the first half, they mm-hmm. played great football. Yeah. Well, so Aj- the, Ajman need to get grips on Coach Olava, don't they? If yeah. they don't deal with him, it's yeah. game over. He's, he's phenomenal. So, Alain, a, a young team, guys. They're having a little bit of an up and down season because they're kind of gelling. They've got rid of a lot of the old squad, brought in some new young, you know, youth players. But they're starting to gel, and on the day, with Kojo Lada and some of these players, it can be fantastic. Ajman, I don't know if they, if they play well, they can beat anybody. So Ajman at home against Alain, the Oranges versus the Boss. Who's going to win, Thomas? Well, I have to, I have to go with Alain. Yes. What's going? Yeah. I think Alain will win 3-1. 3-1, very good, because Ajman can score. Let's get Alain, 2-0. 2-0, good, well done. Okay, last one. A local derby, Awata. They've just brought in a new manager, played fantastic last week, as, as Ian says. They got the result against Al Dafra at a local derby. Now we've got another one in the capital, Abu Dhabi, against the top of the table. Ali Cook, the top goal scorer. Awata at home. Against the top of the table, I want to this new manager. Who's going to win? Thomas, that is a tough one to call. Mm. Against the best team in the league. Yeah, um, again, it's a local derby. Thomas. Yeah, yeah. Um, bragging rights again. Um, I still take the top team in the league. Yeah, right. I, I just think they have more to play for right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they want to be uh, but the peaking, days. peaking at the right time. Yeah, yeah. this is the time to do it. What score? 4 2. Wow. <laughs> wow. You heard that here first. <laughs> I agree with him, Dan. 3 0. 3 0 to Al Jazeera. I, I think it'd be a good game. Obviously, you've got the new manager Hanks going back to his old club, so yeah. you have a point to prove there. I haven't really got anything to play, play for. That's the biggest problem. Pride again. Where Al Jazeera obviously plays the league. They've got, they've got to win again. I think it'll be a decent game, but I think Al Jazeera will, will have just enough. All right, thank you very much. Again, thank you to our special guest. Thank you to him for his, always his excellent uh, analysis of the different games. So everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks to Thomas. Thanks to Ricardo okay. Ian again. Uh, please make a comment, ring the bell, subscribe, and let's finish off with that wonderful goal from uh, Coach Olaf. What a fantastic goal. Enjoy. Asalawa. Asalawa. I just say Asalawa on the camera, yeah? Hasta luego. Okay, okay, thank you.